Kurt, I knew this chimney and fireplace was a bad idea, but we gotta get out of here. This place is on fire. It's gonna blow. Any seconds, go. Don't take that kind of shit from Kurt, me. Kurt, what are you going upstairs for? This place is on fire, man. It's just an iPhone. I'll get a new one. Yeah, that door's pretty hot. That means there's fire back here, but uh, we need to go this way. All right, you ready? Kurt, if you bust that door open, we're done for. Don't it's take just that kind of shit from me. Don't let him know you're scared. Man. Hold your breath. Get up there the whole time? Where'd that come from? Kurt, Kurt, you're gonna be all right, bud. You're gonna pull through. I don't know where that kid came from. I have no idea who's that kid. Did you happen to grab my phone while you're in? Help us out. Hey guys, it's Mike, and today we got an interesting little project. I'm gonna try to install the chimney pipe to the wood burning stove that I picked up not long ago that I got from a friend, thank God, <laughs> because we have to heat this shop in order for us to get this project done this winter. Um, usually I use propane, but not this year. I wanna show you what I picked up. That's gonna help me with this wood burner, but it's another project. Check this out. But before we do that, you guys gotta go check out this video right here that I'm linking up top. That is our beef jerky giveaway. We're trying to get to the 5,000 subscriber mark and we need your help. We need you guys to subscribe and we need you guys possibly if you want to help us out share this that video so we can get more people entered in this contest we're giving away a ton of beef jerky and it's going to be a blast guys so trust me i just need your help if you could do that for me that'd be awesome because there's about i don't know 80 percent of you guys out there who watch my videos a lot but you're not subscribed so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get to it okay you guys ready for it in fact even if you guys saw it, would you know what it was? Bam. What do you think that is? All right, you done? It's a pallet inverter. So I picked this up from work. It has everything I need. What do you think I'm going to use it for, though? I'm going to use it for a log splitter. So this has all the hydraulics that I need to make a log splitter. It has rams on the side, hydraulic cylinders that lift this and tilt the pallets when they put them on to just product, whatever's on the pallet, I guess. So they weren't using it anymore. Everything from what I know is in working condition. They haven't used it in about five years or so from what I estimate. But everything on this thing is it all the power transmission valves, the directional valves, electric motor pump. I'm not sure how I'm gonna drive that motor. I might go to gas power, but for right now, we're just gonna stick with what works and what's been proven. And that's going to be my next log splitter. So stay tuned for that one. For those who don't know, I was able to pick up this wood burner from a friend. He just gave it to me. He was remodeling his basement. He was sitting in his basement and he wanted it gone. But that's what we're going to install on our back corner of the shop. Because this project's not going to get done in a cold garage. I can guarantee you this is going to be worth its weight in gold. So we're going to install some chimney pipe on this. And hopefully, hopefully, we don't run into the mishaps. Because I'm not going to lie, guys. This is my first wood burning stove install and chimney install. So I'm kind of, um, I'm gonna kind of take it slow and I'm gonna let you guys, I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride to see how bad this really is. So the idea is to put that wood burning stove in this corner. You may ask, Mike, why do you wanna get rid of that wood burning stove? That's in the corner now, that thing is amazing. It's like from 1890 and it's absolutely awesome. Well, problem, <laughs> the problem is, is I did want to use that stove. I think that stove is really cool and I wanted to restore it, but I just don't trust the technology. It's a radiant heat. Like I said, I got that one for free. And guys, I don't want my barn to burn down. So I think I'm just gonna leave this relic in the past where it belongs. Maybe I'll get rid of it. Maybe I'll restore it, um, but she's not out of the fight yet. She is a beautiful piece of art. And I think her days of burning wood are done. I think she's gonna be a decorative piece of anything. But we might, we might restore that and put it up in our house for a little decorative piece. We wind up running stove, elevated position, going up. We're gonna shoot outside the wall. You're asking why you wanna go outside that wall. Let me show you. We wanna go outside this wall here because it goes straight up. 
You see how tall that ceiling is? Look, it's tall, folks, trust me. What I didn't want to do is I didn't want to go out and have to pass that eave and shoot this pipe up and go even further. So we're just gonna shoot it straight up. So we're gonna be working in this area right here, running that pipe straight up past that eave. But before I get started, I got one thing to do outside before all else. I knew with the year I've been having, I better go check the back side of this E before we start. And guess what I found? A big old wash nest. Woo! Yeah, you don't like that, do you? Nope. Oh man, there's a lot of them. Oh yeah, over here. Right there. Why don't you keep walking the ground? I don't know if stuff's raining down on me. Don't get it in your face. Yeah. Die, suckers. It's just been a horrible year for wasps. Dang, I tell you what. Don't feel bad for them. So once I get this corner all cleaned up, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right here. This is what transition this is what transitions your outside pipe to your inside pipe going through a wall. It comes in two pieces. We'll be using one of these pieces as a template on the wall. So what I'll do is I'll put this on the wall and then I'm just gonna draw a circle in there. And that's what we're going to use as a guide because we got to cut a big old hole inside of our barn and then we're going to fit a piece of uh, six inch long or I don't remember how long it's like 12 inches long uh, six inch wide double inch pipe and that will go through here to go outside reason being is this going to be your barrier from catching your your surrounding edge on fire so i do know that Trust me, I'm not going in this totally blind. I watched a YouTube video or two maybe. One thing I've noticed with all these parts that I'm using, they've got a UL certification. So none of this stuff is, is off the wall or not proven not to work. So it's good. I think if you're gonna buy this stuff, you're gonna want that UL certification. With that said, cue in the montage. <laughs> Got a nice little uh, rat snake that lives in here. It takes care of all the mice. Don't have any problems down here. So we gotta change plans. Uh, my extension ladder, not very tall. So we're gonna do some redneck ingenuity. I wouldn't suggest you guys doing this. Uh, but isn't that what everybody does that is about to do something unsafe? They suggest that other people don't do it, but then everybody else does it anyways. But I've gotta get this guy up there three pieces because I can't get up tall enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my UTV, I'm gonna back it up through here, and I'm gonna put the back of the extension ladder in the bed of that thing, 
and then I'll have it tilted down. So instead of going straight up, straight up, I'll be going like up like that. So if I get hurt, then at least you guys knew what happened to me. Word the wise, don't do that, boy. I about about lost it, about lost it. But don't buy cheap camera batteries. I don't know how much I lost on that footage, or what was taken, or what what all we captured. But my battery died. So hey guys, it's a new day. I had to go and get some supplies. I actually stopped what I was doing yesterday because things just weren't going as planned. So when things don't go as planned, sometimes the best thing to do is to walk away regroup and stop trying to make things work i didn't have the things i was i needed so now i do i went to uh the store picked up some cinder blocks picked up paint picked up the right size screws picked up a green tree to two by four everything I needed uh i went and looked at a new extension ladder but a don't have that kind of cash right now to buy an extension ladder especially after buying all this chimney stuff to to do this a little tight and those are pretty expensive but we got what we need, so we're gonna get started back on this project. So where are we at? Well, as you see, I didn't get that final piece up top. My extension ladder is not quite tall enough. So I still have to anchor my, uh, my pipe up there to stabilize it. I'm only gonna be able to put one on there because I think I'm gonna have to get some of those extending straps that go on top of your shingles that you drill into your roof to support the top piece. Uh, I don't have a ladder to get up on that roof. Plus it's a very pitched, very steep pitched roof so that's gonna be a challenge in itself so right now we're gonna today we're gonna try to attempt we're gonna secure that we're gonna come inside we're gonna put the fireplace in in uh in its place the center blocks we're gonna try to get it painted we're gonna try to finish everything inside that we can reach right now now we still have a month or so we still got time to get this thing going so we don't need to rush this so if we start rushing things people are probably gonna start getting hurt we got some jerry rigging going on up here. We got some straps in here. I got a clevis hook. We're gonna use the front end of this tractor. Like I said, we're gonna raise this up and try to guide it on to our new platform. So it should be interesting. Let's see if this all goes well. she's not square but we're gonna move around she'll shift a little bit and we'll work with it the fun part people finally the fun part I'm gonna start fabricating our chimney pieces up to the corner there now you might be asking why I didn't buy the full pieces already together and uh, the reason for that is I have to probably possibly trim this stuff to make it fit because not all these pieces are exact angles you know with your 90s and everything they're not going to be exact, so you got to trim to fit. And if you bought a one solid piece of pipe, you'd have to pull it apart or saw it in half. So I just chose to get this, and I'll use sheet metal screws, and we'll have that high temperature caulking that we'll put in there, or sealant, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to start working our way up to the top there. Don't know how it's going to go, but we're almost done, people. We're almost done. Uh, so we got this all pre cut, fitted. Now. Oh, we just got to put it together. Looks like I got to trim just a little bit more off. She's not quite square. 
So like I said, we we bought these split so we can we can trim them up because after that big old three foot piece, this is all I needed right here. So always buy them split, otherwise you're gonna be taking them apart because they have this lock joint. Once you put that thing together, see if I can focus in on it. Uh, maybe can't. Yeah. But either way, they got that lock joint in there. Once you snap that in there, it's gonna be like hell pulling it apart. So that was a little tricky. Those 90s going every which way they wanted. You kind of had to rob Peter and play Paul for a second there, but uh, don't worry about all this stuff. I got high temperature sealant. We'll be putting around those joints and uh, we might be putting some of those bands on there too. And then I'll be running sheet metal screws through all this stuff as well. So yeah. So if you thought the smoke was gonna get out because my joints are going, which I think is the wrong way, but uh, going from my um, adapter piece out, that's what they say it goes. So we're gonna run with it. Next part is, is getting inside of this thing. See so what's going on with the fire brick. It's about 120 degrees in this garage on a summer's day. It is sweltering hot in this, in this garage right now. Sweltering hot. So I've been able to cut these fire bricks down using my sawzall, and because uh, <laughs> these do not come as a kit assembly that fits in your particular stove, they've got to be trimmed. So a regular bimetal sawzall blade or multi-material blade cut through these just fine. And like I said, they've been cut to fit. Then I've been using the little scraps from cutting these off to. Uh, to lock these down and put a little pressure on them so they don't fall in on themselves. So it's all about using everything you got. All right, so this is where we're at. Stove pipe has been secured and sealed off. We still have to install the top pipe to the chimney stack. Um, we have to do the rope seals. We have to uh, do a little paint little polish and we'll finish this up but it's been a long weekend folks and i think i'm going to stop right here we're just going to call this part one so you have to stand by and wait for part two there's not much left to get this going we got a little wiring for the fan and we have a little like i said polishing to do and we should be finished we'll be putting smoke up that chimney in no time flat so hey i appreciate you guys watching and be sure hit that beef jerky giveaway Subscribe. It's going to be a ton of beef jerky. I'm telling you, I'm not lying. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in part two.